I'd like to invite one of my fellow brothers, um, Officer Michael Mahalski, um, up to uh, say a few words. He's going to deliver a testimony on his relation or his relationship with Jesus, number one, but also the um, the mindset of of him and his deliverance from that. Officer Mahalski. Good evening. Is that working? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you for having me. Um, Chad, whoops, sorry. Uh, Chad has invited me to come and talk about uh, my testimony on how God found me and also how the Lord has changed my attitude um, towards my policing. And uh, first off, I'm Michael Mulholski. I've been an officer for 15 years. I used to work in District Number 2. I did about 12 years here at Number 2. Is it all good? 12 years, and I'm currently assigned to uh, downtown. I work out of the uh, warrant squad. So right now I'm just looking for uh, people who are wanted on warrants. We're also assigned right now temporary to the robbery task force. And if you heard all the carjackings and things like that, so we're involved in uh, working on those types of cases that you see. Um, about three years ago, on uh, Labor Day weekend 2013, I was home. Uh, my family was gone on a weekend uh, trip. I was home alone. It was about the middle of the afternoon and I was going to work some overtime for a brewery game and uh, worked the parking lot. I had a bicycle and everything. I was kind of running late but I got a phone call. I got a phone call from an old friend that I haven't talked to in over 20 years and uh, they're just looking for a mutual phone number and uh, through the grapevine I'd heard that she had a family member that passed away, a nephew. Died at a young age between 17 and uh, 19 years of age. And I said, boy, that must have been very devastating for you, your sister, your mom. I knew them all. I didn't know who died, but um, and she said it was very devastating. Uh, a sibling found uh, him dead. He was climbing on some rocks, found him the next day. He was dead. And a uh, horrible story. And uh, we began to discuss the death of what had happened. And uh, well, then she had told me that her sister, believed, his name was Aaron, was reincarnated as a bird. By the time I wasn't saved, I had my thoughts on God, but I thought, boy, if this is getting, her name was Sherry, if this is getting Sherry through her tough time, I thought, great, so be it. Uh, you know, what's, what's, what's the big deal? Why is that so bad? I thought, you know, it's a tough time. If she believes that her son came back as a bird, okay, it's getting her through the time. Well, her voice changed. Um, not angry, not sad, it just changed. I heard this change in her voice. And she said, Mike, that's not the worst part of it. And I thought, what is she going to say that's worse than a, a sibling finding someone dead uh, the way that that happened? And she says to me, did my sister tell my nephew about God? Did my sister tell my nephew about God? Bam. My heart was pierced. My head just started spinning after those words. I had to run. I was running late. We talked a little bit more briefly. She said, Mike, I talked to my cousin who was a believer and uh, just wanted to know if he went to heaven or not. And the, nep and the person she was talking to sounded like just kind of pandered her. Yes, he's in heaven. Don't worry about it. But her voice stuck with me. Is he in heaven? Did my sister tell him about God? I had to get ready for work. I had to shower and everything. And uh, throughout that day, I didn't even remember going to work. I had to work the parking lot, riding the bicycle. I must have been about six hours. I do the overtime because I want the money. I, was just, just wanted God, I just wanted to get out of that baseball game and just go home. My heart was sinking. My head was just spinning. All the thoughts of people who had talked to me about God throughout my entire life just started just going through my head. As a child, people that I heard talk about God, uh, whether it was good or bad, my thoughts on God were just coming. Bits and pieces throughout work, work relations, going to homes, people on the street, hearing, just walking past uh, a Bucks game or something and someone passing out a Bible track, all these thoughts just kept going through my head. 
Well, then thoughts came through my head. Thoughts of all the time I cursed God. All the times I mocked God. All the times I shook my fist at God. All the times I didn't believe in God. All the miracles that happened in my life that I just shook past of. It just happened. It just happened. My heart was just spinning. That next morning, <clears throat> I got up and uh, still, my, my head is just spinning. What was said? Did I tell um, my nephew about God? Well, that next day, um, I, was, I went and got a cup of coffee. I went to a spot through Whitnall Park where I take our dog uh, running. And uh, that day, I had with me, um, I drop it. I had a Bible track. I had a Bible track that I did not throw away. It was given to me by my old partner, Tim Zielinski. Tim Zielinski is a believer. He put his trust and faith in the Lord, and he always tried talking to me at work about God. Well, one day we got sent to uh, uh, trouble with a subject off of not too far from here, 16th and Beecher. It was a gentleman, a young man, about 20 years of age, who they were kicking off the bus. They were kicking him off the bus because he was reading the Bible on the bus. So we got there. Security was there. The gentleman was very, very nice. And he just refused to get back on the bus. He says, no, no problem, guys. Everything's okay. We're going to make him go back on the bus. Tell the bus driver, he's going back on. You can't do this. He said, no problem. I'm, I live a few blocks away, but he gave me that Bible track. I just had it here with me. But... Um, I kept that Bible track, something inside of me said, don't throw it away. I kept it in my visor. I went to Whitnall Park and I thought to myself, did I tell my wife, Susan, and my son, John, about God? And I didn't. I didn't. I was, I'm 47 and a half years old at that time. And I didn't tell them about God. I didn't tell Susan, my wife, and my son. And it was at that moment that I knew I was going to bow down to the Lord and that I was going to have to answer. Why didn't you tell your wife? Why didn't you tell your son about me? He showed me everything, but I blew it off. I didn't listen. He, and that pierced my heart, and that is when the Lord opened my eyes and my ears to my sins of who I was, to just, just my wicked ways. He opened my heart that morning. Um, I realized then, after reading that Bible track, I put my faith and my trust in the Lord. Afterwards, I had a friend, my friend Tim, also told me about a church that he went to, Grace Community Bible uh, Church up on 84th and Beloit. Um, I left that day. I went to work the next day. Tim wasn't there. He was there on a Tuesday. I saw Tim. I said, Tim, you will see me in church next Sunday. I had never stopped going back. Forty-seven and a half years old I was. And that's what it took for God to pierce my heart. That phone call wasn't no fluke. Twenty years. Twenty years I did not talk to this person. Twenty years. And just asking for a phone number. And just asking, how is your family? What happened? And when I heard that voice, it pierced me. And that is when God opened my eyes and my ears, and that is when God had saved me. For 12 and a half years, I was a police officer, a non-believer. I felt I did a good job. I felt I went out there. I came to work. I don't call in sick. I'm out there. I'm, I'm, I felt inside I was doing the right things, but also I had a lot of anger, and I had a lot of hate. I had a lot of hate with drug dealers, I had a lot of hate for the gang members here on the south side. I had a lot of hate for the prostitutes out here. And I had a lot of hate for the drug users out here. I hated seeing what they were doing out here. Inside, I hated them. Hate's not a strong enough word. It's how I felt for some of these people, especially the gang members. I used to wish some of the gang members I used to deal with, I dealt with them all the time, that I wish I'd, when, when you'd hear that shooting called over off of Ethan Lapham, yes, it's going to be one of those guys. And I'm going to roll up on them, and it's going to be their last breath. And I'm going to walk up on them, and I'm going to grab them by the throat, and I'm going to say, listen, so-and-so, 
you're going to hell. Well, at that time, what I didn't know, that person, if I would have done that, would have grabbed me by my collar and said, you're coming with me, Mike, because that's where I was going. I used to think I was better than a drug dealer. I used to think I was better than a prostitute. I used to think I was better than everybody. I'm not. I am not better than a drug dealer. I am, a, I am not better than a prostitute. I am the same. I am just a sinner. I am better than nobody in here. I am the worst sinner there is. So with that, the Lord has changed my heart. He has softened my heart. He has opened my eyes to my sins and he has taken that hate and that anger away. I don't have that anger anymore. I don't have that hate. That's not because of something I read in a self-help book. That's not something that I just said, I'm going to change my ways today, January 1st, 2016. I'm not going to hate anybody no more. No, it is God. Because I realized these people are no different than I am. I am one step away from being role reversed. Role reversed with them. I could be me locked up. God has worked me in many ways. He's, because he's opened my eyes and my ears to, like Chad said, what we're dealing with are crimes of sin. That's how I take these assignments. I don't walk in anymore. You are a scumbag. You are a piece of garbage. No, what's going on here is sin, the domestic violence, the, the hitting, the physical, the stealing, the robbing, the shooting. These are all sins. And that is what changed my attitude about policing. That's why I'm more, the hate is gone. I'm more confident in what I do. I can walk into the home, not be frustrated. I, I can get frustrated, but not like before. Okay, this is a sinful problem. We, I can walk in now and say, God is not here. Okay, now I can work with that. I understand. You don't have the Lord. Let's work with that right now. Instead of verbally abusing people now, if I have a conversation with someone that's, that I know is going to be going down to jail, I will try to give them a Bible track as they are into the cell. I try to talk to him, open up. Not everybody I talk to. There's got to be a communication there. But every person that I've given a Bible track to, when they've gone to the cell, no one has cursed me. No one said, take this card and, and shove it. Nothing like that. Some people have cried. Some people have broke down. Some people have said, no one has ever spoken the word of God to me before in their life. And some have said, I'm not, I don't believe, but I'll take the card. Thank you. No one has ever cursed me out doing that. I don't know what's happened, but when I leave work now, instead of cursing, instead of hating every person, every person that I'm involved in arresting, I pray for them. I pray that while they're sitting in that jail cell, that they seek the Lord. What better place in that filthy, stinking jail cell to seek the Lord? That's where I pray for. I pray they read that card that I give them, and I also pray for their families, that they seek the Lord. Because that person inside there, he can be locked up maybe for 10 years, 20 years, temporary. This is just man's court. This is just man's court. Final judgment is with the Lord. And that's what matters. Um, as we see going on right now, we see a lot of anti-sediment uh, with the police. Uh, officers getting shot, but also crime throughout, if you watch the news, is really getting out of hand. And um, what God has done is he's opened my eyes that this is coming. And in Matthew 24, then Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his di disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, do you not see all these things, assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now he has sat at the Mount Olives. The disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear, the, hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, 
pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will be betrayed one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise and deceive many. And because lawlessness, is what we're seeing, will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then will come. We see the lawlessness. It's coming. It's not getting any better. But we need to spread God's word. But there is hope. And in John... 316, 317. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to the world through him might be saved. That's the answer right there. To be saved. I just want to, and I'm not sure whoever's faith, what it is. Hopefully we can plant some seeds, but if you're not, uh, saved by the Lord. Salvation is the most important thing in the world, both now and hereafter. If you are not saved, nothing really matters. Thank you. Mike's testimony remem- reminds me of the parable of seed growing in Mark chapter 4, verse 26. And he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises day and night, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth is produced by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. Timmy planted a seed in you for many years and he watered it and other Christians have come by, fertilized it, watered it and when the harvest was ready, when it was God's timing, that harvest um, is bountiful in you and now you're going with just as, as it appears in nature in, in, in plant life. Seeds are produced once it is harvested and those seeds are scattered and among others and more and more plants uh, grow family the situation that's going on in this country is very much like a storm and when we go to work every night we can see the we can hear the thunder we can see the lightning and it's like walking in in, in the waves are tossing and us back and forth. In Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 40, on that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And the other boats were there with him. And when a great windstorm arose, the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. Does that feel like what's going on right now in this country? The waves are tossing us back and forth. Accusations are flying um, back and forth. But as he was, Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him saying, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And when he awoke, he rebuked the wind and the sea and said, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear, and they said to one another, Who is this then, that even the wind and sea obey him? We can't do this alone. We need one another. We, together, are the body of Christ, the believers among us. And I need everybody in in my life, everybody that's here. And we're here for you as well. The family in this house reaches out its hand to the police officers, the emergency responders, but everybody in need of prayer. One of the things that we practice in in this house is something called an altar call. 
and what we do is we have people that are called intercessors or they're prayer warriors that will, are here every service to pray for you no matter what you need in your time. If you need salvation, if you're going through a difficult tr- time in your marriage, in your relationship, if you are struggling with um, suicidal thoughts, depressions, um, if you're struggling against the accusations that are occurring, we're here to pray for you. And the most important part of today's message, yes, we're here to honor our brother in blue, all of our brothers and sisters in blue, especially you. (laughs) But I'm sure he wasn't thinking that going home was not a possibility. I'm sure, well, it probably was a possibility. We all have that thought when we get into a car. But family, tomorrow is not promised two verses he already talked about John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall perish but have eternal life and Romans 10 9 because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved I'd like to make a a couple altar calls um, with the storm that's going on here uh, today we're going to be playing a little music the first is if if you need to know Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've been moved today by Mike's testimony as God used him as a vessel, um, as, a, as a sounding horn for what it means to have Christ in your life and how your life can be different. If you've been moved by the story, if you've uh, had experiences in your life where you're like, yeah, that's me. I've cursed God. I need forgiveness. I need to be reconciled to God you'll have an opportunity and our brothers and sisters of this house will come up and pray for you. So that's number one. Number two is that if you're a police officer or a law enforcement family, we'd like to also invite you up here. It's your choice if you would, but we would very much like to welcome you if you feel moved to do so to come up and we would like to pray for you and bless you, your life, your family, and ask for God's covering in your shift. And for the rest of us here, we also could be going through situations of hardships and we just need that little extra edge. We need to also be covered by the full armor of God. We'd also like to invite you up here and we will pray for you also. For any of those reasons, we invite you up, we'll pray for you. Please come.
That was powerful spirit. I feel your presence. Family, God bless you and keep you. May his light, his face shine upon you. May he look upon you with favor and give you his peace. As we close out the service, and I invite Pastor back up here for the final blessing. Remember God's commandment to treat one another with love. It, it doesn't matter what color your skin. It doesn't matter your gender. It doesn't. None of that matters. What matters is your soul and that you are my brother and sister. God bless you. Can we give God praise? For these men and women. Is this your track? There it is. Salvation plain and simple. Praise be to the Father. Let's give praise to the Father in heaven for all the hard work that went into this and these beautiful testimonies and the word that was brought forth here today. Can we just give God thanks? Thank you, Father. You know, I was... As I was sitting here listening to Chad, uh, we know several police officers here that I won't mention by name in this house, and, and, and heard Michael's testimony, and I'm encouraged. 
I'm encouraged to know that there are men and women out there protecting and serving, but they're filled with the Holy Spirit. My God. While we remain standing, MPD, let me address you briefly. Since we've opened up the doors of this ministry nine years ago, you have always been a part of our prayers. We have diligently presented you, the Milwaukee Police Department, before God for your protection and for wisdom in carrying out the task that you have been entrusted to do. We have not stopped praying for you, and we will not stop praying. Because covering law enforcement is not just a good idea. It's God's idea. It's a good idea that society be a place of order, peace, and justice. And we trust that these are your main goals. And this is why we can pray with you with genu pray for you with genuineness and enthusiasm. Never forget that 1170 West Wind Lake Avenue in this place, there are prayers being sent out on your behalf. And those prayers are made frequently. And because this is a God idea, I have no doubt in my mind that there are numerous churches throughout this beautiful city of Milwaukee that do the same. Peace and civility is possible. Even in the most difficult communities, it is possible. I heard someone say before that peace is a dream. And it is only a dream to those who do not believe. Those who do not believe in the mighty God and the peace that he brings. Because even though that it might be impossible for men, I want you to rest assured that peace is not impossible for God. MPD, with prudence and respect, I want to give you this final pearl before letting you go. Every day that you put on your uniform, do not leave your home without reminding yourself that it's about peace. For the sons and daughters, you already know that it's about the peace that comes from heaven. But not just the peace that's brought about by putting an offender in jail, but your own peace, your peace of mind, and the peace that you, are, that you need to encounter every situation. Let us pray. King of glory, we are here at this moment of conclusion and we ask your blessing over these men and women, over the brave souls that go out to protect our communities daily. We ask your blessing over them, over their spouses and over their children. Father, we ask that in every encounter that their minds are steady and peace and direction that is compelled by your Holy Spirit, by your wisdom. We ask you, Lord, that you give them discernment to do their job well. We break every wicked scheme of darkness that wants to discredit them. We break every satanic agenda that is designed to cause the community to turn against them. I pray that they are, dis are never desensitized to the reality of the people that they serve are serving our souls, your creation, and human beings. I pray their work will never cause them to despise the communities that they serve in, but that the peace and words of life be on their lips. We come against every anarchic spirit that is designed to produce division and dissension to break the order in our society. We cancel all wars that have been declared against our communities and against our law enforcement officers. Father, bring peace in the midst of civil unrest. Bring unity where there is division. Bring love where there is hate. Lord Almighty and giver of life, we ask you that you sustain the lives of the Milwaukee Police Department. We ask you that you protect those who protect us. Father, we ask you that instead of depression, that you give them a sound mind. We ask you, Lord God, instead of slander, that they receive love, encouragement, and respect that they rightfully deserve. Wonderful Savior, only you know those who know you as God, the Redeemer, and eternal hope of all humanity. Let them come freely to you at the right time. Let them accept the invitation that you have given to them, the invitation to eternal life. Father, we praise you. In Jesus', Jesus holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Before the closing announcement, MPD, I want to tell you this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. The Lord of heaven has ordained that there be, that there be more for you than against you. We're praying for you and we're not going to stop. Continue to do what you're doing in wisdom and in love. Can somebody give him a hand, praise? Right now, we're closing out the night, but it looks like we have some good treats in the back. Somebody grab a police officer and give them a big hug. And there's some, there's a few police officers here incognito tonight. So if you haven't seen somebody, just give them a hug and tell them you appreciate them. Family, be fruitful and multiply.